So remember my comment last week on The Daily about seeing a product that I could not wait to share with everybody? Well, it is about that time. This is the Razer Phone. Probably one of the coolest products I've seen this year, and also one that leaves me with the most amount of questions. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and let's go hands on. At the time of my briefing, my first question was, why a gaming phone? I mean, I've seen Sony try and fail with the Xperia Play, and Nvidia's not so popular Shield approach as well, though remember, these happened a few years ago. Razer responded with some key elements to ponder. First, that the company only enters a market once it's ready for serious gaming, and second, that this device is made for gamers, not just for gaming. As such, the Razer phone looks a lot like a Razer gaming laptop, meaning that it doesn't look like this huge dinosaur with claws like most gaming laptops do. On the contrary, the same black aluminum finish with sharp borders is here in its full glory. This is a very commanding phone at 197 grams and unapologetically large at 158 millimeters tall, 78th of width and 8th of thickness. Now, this is one phone that you actually want to be large, as remember, it is a gaming phone made for gamers. Tiny details like the fingerprint-enabled power button and the volume keys have all been centered to avoid yanking you out of your game by accidental key presses. There are a few significant party tricks to boost your gaming experience as well. For starters, and borrowing from Razer laptops, we have the same IGZO LCD technology on this 5.7-inch Quad HD display. Their support for a wider color gamut, and best of all, this is the first display that I know of that supports variable refresh rate that can range from 20 hertz to an insane 120 hertz. Yes, I said it right, 120, meaning it can remain basic with applications like Twitter, or it can get crazy fast and fluid with graphics intensive games. Even cooler, the refresh rate is frame for frame determined by the game, and Razer is already working with gaming developers to unlock their full potential. Second, and disclaimer, be sure to lower the volume of your device right now. Ready? Okay, the speakers on this device are jaw-dropping. Each speaker has its own amplifier with a port size increase when compared to the next bit Robin and tuned by both Dolby and Atmos. And no, there's no headphone jack to complement this audio, but the USB-C dongle does support a 24-bit DAC. Third are the internals. We have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 835, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigs of expandable storage, and the whopping 4,000 milliamp hour battery that can charge from zero to 50 in 35 minutes with a bundled 24 watt charger that's now powered by the new Qualcomm Quick Charge 4.0 Plus technology. This 4.0 Plus technology is all about increasing battery longevity by not exposing it to heat. And speaking of heat on the phone, Razer has ported the same thermal dissipation technology of its Blade laptop to avoid the need to throttle the processor when gaming gets intense. Fourth is the software. You won't need to install Nova Launcher on this phone. It already comes with a built-in copy of Nova Prime, meaning all the flexibility of near stock Android is here, with a few accents to remind you that you're carrying a product made by Razer. I can tell you from a few hours of using this prototype that the phone is blazing fast. You'll get Android 7.1.1 out of the box and the Oreo update will arrive on Q1 2018. Fifth, and yes, there are actually more party tricks, Razer will be the launch partner of a couple of console quality games. One of the partnerships is with Square Enix to bring the Chapter 1 of Final Fantasy XV, and yes, I mean the console version. The other is with Tencent to bring its Honor of Kings from China to the United States, with the added kick that you can choose DC comic characters for the game. Bear in mind, this is pretty much the biggest game right now in China. Six, and most important, Believe it or not, the price tag. You can get all this phone for $6.99 unlocked. And if you're asking yourself why you get so much on such an aggressive price tag, well, this phone is not exactly perfect. 
We already covered the lack of a headphone jack, which makes charging this phone while playing a game impossible. The second is that this device is not water resistant, which is already a common trait for phones priced at that tier. And last but not least, I'm a little concerned about the cameras given Razer's use of a Samsung ISO cell sensor, but we hear that it's the same sensor that Samsung provided with the Galaxy S7 variants, so that should be a good thing. This is a combo of a 12 megapixel primary sensor at f1.7 aperture, and the second is a 12 megapixel telephoto at f2.6. Razer claims that it's not doing any of that half-baked portrait mode, but instead providing a fluid experience with zooming in and out. The selfie camera is of 8 megapixels at f2. So yes, this is the Razer phone. Pre-orders begin today, and I don't think I've been so excited about a gaming device as I have today. At least on paper and from my experience today, this is definitely a lot of smartphone, but our final verdict on its ability to deliver will be determined in our full review coming very soon. While that happens, folks, don't forget to follow us on social media and subscribe to our channel by hitting the button. The top card will take you to our Samsung Galaxy Note 8 review. The bottom will take you to our iPhone 8 review. You can also follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera, or on Instagram at Jaime Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.